Test 5. In this section of the test, you will have the chance to show how well you understand spoken English. There are four parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Part 1. Directions. For each question, you will see a picture and you will hear four short statements. The statements will be spoken just one time. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully to understand what the speaker says. When you hear the four statements, look at the picture and choose the statement that best describes what you see in the picture. Choose the best answer, A, B, C, or D. Now listen to the four statements. You will hear A. He is on the phone. B. She is driving the car. C. She is typing on the computer. D. He is sitting next to her. Statement D. Best describes what you see in the picture. Therefore, you should choose answer D. 1. A. She is in her car. B. She is writing a ticket. C. She is opening the car door. D. She is breaking the law. Two. A. She is talking to an individual. B. She has long hair. C. Her hands are on the podium. D. There are three microphones. Three. A. The woman is sitting between the two men. B. The man in the middle is drinking water. C. The man on the right is speaking. D. The woman's elbows are on the table. Four. A. The man's ears are covered. B. The man is flying an airplane. C. The man is looking toward the sky. D. The man is in the open air. Five. A. The older man is wearing a robe. B. The officers are arresting someone. C. One man's hands are on his waist. D. They are talking around a table. Six. A. The man in the suit is holding the book with both hands. B. The woman is listening to the story. C. The man in the middle is wearing a sweatshirt. D. They are writing a children's story. Seven. A. The animal is in a cage. B. The child is frightened of the animal. C. The woman is holding the child. D. The child is reaching towards the animal. Eight. A. It is light outside. B. The car is not moving. C. The women are out of the car. D. A man is signaling to the car. Nine. A. There is a window at the back of the room. B. The market is not inside. C. There is a small number of people in the building. D. The items are displayed on a shelf. Ten. A. The woman is handing cash to the cashier. B. The woman is waiting in line. C. The woman's jacket is buttoned. D. The woman is at a hardware store.
Test 5, Part 2, Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear a question or statement spoken in English, followed by three responses, also spoken in English. The question or statement and the responses will be spoken just one time. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully. You are to choose the best response to each question or statement. Now listen to a sample question. You will hear. Why are you late? A. I hope I won't be. B. My car broke down. C. He always is. The best response is choice B. My car broke down. Therefore, you should choose B. Eleven. Do you ever take the bus to work? A. Sometimes, but not usually. B. Yes, it does. C. It's in the tall building on Hennepin Avenue. 12. You got the promotion, didn't you? A. It's right here in my bag. B. No, and I am so disappointed. C. I didn't want to go. 13. What did you think of the documentary? A. I thought it would be more crowded. B. It was so stimulating. C. I saw it last night. 14. Shall I run the designs to Judy upstairs? A. No one is working upstairs. B. She is a serious athlete. C. That's okay. I'll do it myself. 15. Do you think she will accept our proposal? A. Yes, everyone except for us. B. I haven't the slightest idea. C. He says it was an interesting idea. 16. Should we get the rates for that office phone plan? A. It couldn't hurt. B. I think his number is listed in the book. C. Yes, they came yesterday. 17. Would you like a cup of tea? A. Did I do something illegal? B. Yes, I do like it. C. No, but thank you for asking. Eighteen. Would you rather have an ocean view or a mountain view? A. Yes, please. I appreciate it. B. I have no preference. C. I'll take them both if that's all right. Nineteen. Who is it that we are waiting for? A. For at least 30 minutes now. B. The General Fleet Representative. C. I don't mind at all. 20. When did you start working the graveyard shift? A. Just last week. B. At the cemetery. C. Every other day. 21. For what time did you schedule a conference call? A. It's to discuss the new strategic plan. B. Tomorrow, do you want to come? C. 3.30 this afternoon. Why do you ask? 22. Why don't you install the new software we discussed yesterday? A. No, I haven't located it yet. B. I plan to do it later this afternoon. C. Yesterday was indeed interesting. 23. How do you normally spend your evenings? A. We usually have a family dinner and then watch TV together. B. That sounds nice. 
What time should we meet? C. I won't have any money until Friday afternoon. Twenty-four. Is L.A. one or two hours behind? A. Neither. It's three. B. Either would be fine. C. It's been falling behind for years. Twenty-five. How can we ever thank you for all you've done? A. It really was no problem. B. Thanks, but no thanks. C. Please, I'm not done yet. Twenty-six. Can you take this to be mailed when you get the chance? A. No, I don't have all the facts. B. That really is a wonderful opportunity. C. Could you ask Sue? I'm swamped. Twenty-seven. Do you prefer that the evaluation be typed or handwritten? A. Only when it's an important document. B. The former, please, if you don't mind. C. No, I don't mind at all. Twenty-eight. Who should sign for this delivery? A. I didn't want any signs to be delivered. B. That would be Mr. King down the hall. C. I think he should come in tomorrow. Twenty-nine. Do you think you'll get a new apartment when your lease is up? A. I'll probably look for something closer to work. B. Perhaps it will at the end of March. C. I hope you find one. Thirty. Can you recommend a good place to get a burger? A. It closes at ten. B. I would love to. C. Try the place on the corner of Church Street. Thirty-one. Nice to meet you, Miss Jones. How have you enjoyed Rome so far? A. I have no complaints yet. B. I am so exhausted from the flight. C. I leave after work tomorrow. Thirty-two. Why did your checkup take so long? A. The doctor was behind schedule, so I had to wait a while. B. It's not going to take that long. C. Don't fret about it. I'll check for you. Thirty-three. Is the couple going to hire a wedding planner? A. It is such a beautiful ceremony. B. I don't think they see it as necessary. C. In order to build it faster. Thirty-four. Haven't you finished the layout yet? A. Sorry, I don't have time to help you. B. Yes, I just woke up and I'm ready to work. C. Don't rush me. I still need another hour. Thirty-five. Why aren't you taking the seven p.m. flight? A. Yes, that's right. B. That's when I'm scheduled to land. C. I couldn't get a seat. Thirty-six. Approximately how much does your notebook computer weigh? A. About five hundred dollars. B. You can borrow some paper from me. C. This one is about three kilos. Thirty-seven. Is the principal looking for a guidance counselor or a secretary? A. Both, I think. 
B. No, he's not. C. He found them in the dining area. 38. This weather is too humid for my liking. A. Really? I don't mind it at all. B. I like it as well. C. That depends on if it rains. 39. Do you spell your name with an E or an A? A. I hope you know how to spell it. B. The former, as an elephant. C. Your guess is as good as mine. 40. Weren't you the one who was supposed to send the mass email? A. It is quite big, isn't it? B. The mail should be picked up at noon. C. Oh, no, I completely forgot. 5, Part 3 Directions You will hear some conversations between two people. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speakers say in each conversation. Select the best response for each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The conversations will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Questions 41 through 43 refer to this conversation. The shop promised to have my car ready by 6.30 this evening, and now they are saying tomorrow at 2. Do you need a ride to work today? That would be great, thanks. It's so inconvenient to be without a car. I know. I wish that our city would invest in a good public transportation system. 41. What does the man offer? Forty-two. When will the woman's car be ready? Forty-three. What does the man wish? Questions forty-four through forty-six refer to this conversation. Why did you decide to paint the office? The walls are so old and stained. Plus, I read somewhere that bright colors have a positive effect on people's work attitudes. Do you have any colors picked out yet? We are deciding among yellow, orange, and pink. I'm leaning toward yellow, but it's not just my decision. 44. What is not true of the walls as they are now? 45. Why is the man painting the walls? 46. What color does the man prefer? Questions 47 through 49 refer to this conversation. You're back! I figured a meeting with the mayor would take much longer than half an hour. I know. He needed to hear about the grave problems our research found. Didn't you explain it to him? I told him about low reading level scores. However, when I started pointing out how the superintendent could fix the problem, he cut me off. I really expected more from him. 47. For how long was the woman supposed to meet with the mayor? 48. What was the purpose of the meeting with the mayor? 49. What does the man feel toward the mayor? 50. Questions 50 through 52 refer to this conversation. I hate my job. I'm no good at it. I don't care about it at all. And the pay is awful. Weren't you only going to stay for six months? It's two years later and you're still there. I know. I think you should just walk away now. You need the fear of not having a job at all to motivate you to find a new one. You're right. I'll give my two weeks notice right now. 
Fifty. What does the woman not mention about her job? Fifty one. How long has the woman had her job? Fifty two. What does the man tell the woman? Questions fifty three through fifty five. Refer to this conversation. I still haven't heard back from them, so I'm assuming I didn't get it. Don't worry. Employers need time to make a decision. It would be wise to call them, though. But I would feel silly if I called and they told me that they were not interested. 53. What is the man disappointed about? 54. What does the woman suggest to the man? Fifty five. What is the man afraid of? Questions fifty six through fifty eight refer to this conversation. Is this new? No, it was Andrew's, but when he moved to the eleventh floor, He didn't feel like hauling it with him. He let me keep it. I could really use a larger desk. I've got a computer, printer, and a fax machine on my desk. And that, of course, is in addition to the piles of paperwork. I wish I could help you out, but I'm not willing to give it up. 56. Who paid for the man's desk? 57. What is not on the woman's desk? Fifty eight. What is the man going to do with the desk? Questions fifty nine through sixty one refer to this conversation. After work, do you want to go to that new department store that opened where the golf store used to be? It's right next door to the burger joint. Of course. We can take my car and leave yours in the parking lot here. I'll just drive separately. I have to go straight to a neighborhood meeting at seven thirty. Fifty nine. Where does the man want to go? Sixty. Who is the man in relation to the woman? Sixty one. Who will drive? Questions sixty two through sixty four refer to this conversation. Can your department get by without temporary workers this summer? Probably. We're having a meeting next week, so we can ensure that none of our vacations overlap. We really need to trim the budget. Sales were terrible last quarter. Well, I guarantee you that we will arrange everything for the summer. You are always so committed. Sixty two. What will the woman's department do this summer? Sixty three. What does the man want to do? Sixty four. What is true of the woman? Questions sixty five through sixty seven refer to this conversation. Do you know Ron from the eleventh floor? Not well, but we've met at the office parties. We are considering adding him to our team on the seventh floor, but I'm not sure he's got what it takes. Our team is pretty intense. Unfortunately, I don't know Ron well enough to give you an opinion. We really have to find someone soon. The work is adding up. Sixty-five. What is the man's relationship with Ron? Sixty six. What does the man tell the woman? Sixty seven. What is true of the seventh floor? Questions sixty eight through seventy refer to this conversation. Look at that line at security. I'll miss my flight. I told you to arrive earlier. Yes, but you know me. I am always running late. 
Maybe you should set your clock ahead a few minutes so you'll think you're running late, but when you arrive, you'll actually be right on time. 68. Where is this conversation taking place? 69. What is true of the men? 70. What does the woman suggest? 5, Part 4 Directions You will hear some talks given by a single speaker. You will be asked to answer three questions about what the speaker says in each talk. Select the best response to each question and mark the letter A, B, C, or D on your answer sheet. The talks will not be printed in your test book and will be spoken only one time. Questions 71 through 73 refer to the following announcement. Welcome aboard our land and water tour of Seattle. I sure hope you all brought your rain gear for the ocean leg of the trip. We all know Seattle is not known for being the driest city in the U.S., and so couple that with the ocean, and getting wet is inevitable. The one-hour journey will cover ten different city locations. And of course, one of your land stops will be the famous market, where you will see the fresh fish being tossed about like footballs. And of course, on board, you will have an endless supply of Seattle's famous coffee. 71. Where are the people who are listening to this talk? 72. What is Seattle known for? 73. What will be happening to the fish? Questions 74 through 76 refer to the following speech. We are gathered here today to celebrate and pay tribute to Howard Larson, who is retiring from Academy Publishing after 40 years of loyal and impeccable service. He started out at a young age working in our bindery department downstairs, enduring severe paper cuts and some heavy lifting. After five years, he was promoted to supervisor, where he remained for 15 years. At the end of that stint, he traded in his blue collar for a suit and tie and has been an effective sales distributor until the end of his time here. He excelled in every position he has held here and, more importantly, has had a profound impact on all of his co-workers. We know he has all sorts of travel plans, leisure time, and, of course, grandchildren time ahead of him, and we wish him well in all his future endeavors. He will be truly missed by all of us here. 74. Where does this introduction take place? 75. What position is Mr. Larson retiring from? 76. How long has Mr. Larson worked at the company? Questions 77 through 79 refer to the following announcement. Good morning to everyone and welcome to Run to Cure 2007. We are so happy to have you here today. You're racing here not just for yourself, but for all those who have fought the battle and won, who are still fighting, and to remember those who didn't make it. As you see, there's a large number of participants today. There are 500 of you. So everyone starting at the same time is impossible. In order to accurately measure each runner's time, make sure you pick up your computer chip, which should be attached to your left shoe. It will automatically activate as you cross the starting line. Good luck. Thank you again for coming. And remember to drink plenty of water throughout the race. 77. What kind of race is this? 78. How many runners are there? 79. What is the function of the computer chip? Questions 80 through 82 refer to the following announcement. Engel Incorporated, 
a leading graphic design company, is now seeking a director for international marketing. The ideal candidate will have completed five years in a similar capacity. Familiarity with Central American markets and fluency in Spanish is preferred. The position entails extensive travel approximately four months out of the year. Please email or fax resume, references, and a cover letter. We do not accept mailed applications. 80. What is the position being advertised? 81. What would not help you get the job? 82. What does the employer not ask for? Questions 83 through 85 refer to the following announcement. Your attention please, flight 617 with a stop in Dallas and final destination of Los Angeles is now departing out of gate B12. Again, that is B12. If you are waiting at gate A7, please make your way to the new assigned gate. The departure time has remained unchanged. Again, flight 617 is now departing from gate B12. 83. What is the flight's final destination? 84. What is the announcement regarding? 85. From where is the flight departing? Questions 86 through 88 refer to the following talk. Thank you all for taking the time out of your busy schedule and joining us for our fundraiser. So far this evening, we have had 2,000 people and we have raised $3,000 for the new community center. Before the night is through, we plan on having raised $30,000. I hope you are all enjoying the delicious meal donated by Niklo's Restaurant. They have been a member of our community for over 50 years and are one of our biggest supporters in this endeavor. Here is the schedule for tonight's events. After dinner, we will hold the first part of the vocal auction from 7.30 to 8.30. During this time, you are free to roam about and to write down your bids for the silent auction. This will end at 9 o'clock. As soon as we collect all the bid sheets, we will enjoy a 30-minute performance from one of our favorite local bands, Farewell to February. Upon the conclusion of that performance, the winners of the silent auction will be announced. 86. How much money do they hope to raise at the fundraiser? 87. When will the band play? 88. How will someone know if he or she wins any item from the silent auction? 89-91 refer to the following talk. As a U.S. citizen struggling to work my way through college in the face of ever-increasing tuition costs, I find it appalling that federal legislation has been proposed that would grant undocumented immigrants the luxury of paying in-state tuition. I was born and raised in the USA. I pay taxes and my yearly earnings are not enough to live on decently. However, I seem to be making too much money to obtain financial aid. I would like to hear one reason lawmakers believe tax dollars from hard-working American citizens should subsidize college tuition funds for undocumented immigrants. 89. What is difficult for the speaker? 90. What is the speaker's attitude toward a government decision? 91. What group of people is the speaker discussing? 92-94 Questions 92 through 94 refer to the following newscast. Convicted bank robber Joe Pollock, 24, was sentenced to 40 years and 5 months in prison for robbing the East Roswell branch of First Federal Bank. His accomplice, Randy Trask, 25, was sentenced to 30 years in prison. 
Pollock escaped from jail while awaiting sentencing, but was captured after robbing the Big Sky Western Bank in Atlanta. 92. For what crime was Joe Pollock arrested? Ninety-three. For how long was Joe Pollock sentenced? Ninety-four. Who is Randy Trask? Questions 95 through 97 refer to the following promotion. Hello, Ms. Anderson. My name is Deborah from AT&D. And I am calling to tell you that AT&D is now offering a special long-distance deal to all those who switch AT&D during this month. I see that you were a customer five years ago and that you made many long-distance calls. Well, Miss Anderson, if you switch back to us, we promise to give you two full months of long-distance phone calls for just three cents a minute. That's right, three cents a minute for any North American or European country. Would you like to accept this offer, Miss Anderson? 95. Why is Deborah calling Miss Anderson? 96. What is true of Miss Anderson? 97. How many cents a minute is a long distance deal? 98 through 100 refer to the following voicemail. You have reached the office of the Missouri Organizing Project. Our office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 7 p.m. If you'd like to leave a message for Nate Hitch, Director of MOP, please press 1. If you'd like to leave a message for Trevor Chick, MOP Lead Organizer, please press 2. If you are calling for Danielle Lang, the office intern, please press 3. If you wish to leave a general message, please press star or wait for the tone. Thank you. 98. What should you do if you want to leave a message for the intern? 99. What should you do if you want to leave a message for no one in particular. 100. When would you probably hear this voicemail? That is the end of the test.